what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video and we're gonna check out wwe just got incredibly stupid at hell in a cell 2021 shout out to everyone that was in my live stream yesterday i was streaming uh live on youtube doing my live uh reactions to hell in a cell and a lot of you guys made the show so much more enjoyable than how i normally watch it which i would watch it and take notes and then you know record a video on my thoughts and opinions but doing it live with you guys man it, it just made the experience so much better and there were some incredibly questionable and quite frankly dumb things that happened at hell in a cell so i had to check this video out by wrestling lamia man i know it's going to be a good one so i appreciate everyone in that was there for the stream you guys were amazing you made the stream so much better bro you made that my experience of watching hell in a cell this year so much more enjoyable than if i was to watch it by myself but we're gonna check this out man appreciate all the love and support road to 50k and let's see what wrestling lamia has to say what is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Now it's time for the 2021 Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, which is said to be the last pay-per-view in the WWE Thunderdome. Oh, thank goodness. Thank God. Yeah. I'm sick of the damn Thunderdome. Thank with God, With six man. sensational <clears throat> matches booked, will the WWE deliver the good? Well, no, it's actually just getting stupider each time, and this moment was just ridiculous. Anyway, join us now as we recap all the matches and analyze the show for the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive So lists. glad they're getting rid of the Thunderdome and actually have live fans in attendance for the next pay-per-view. Thank goodness, man. <clears throat> Let's start off with the pre-show as Mandy Rose took on Natalia. Didn't watch this Rose match. is out to prove she's more than a pretty face and keeps this things match competitive. At all. And at one point nearly finishing the match after hitting a missile drop kick. However, after escaping an armbar attempt, Rose falls into Natalia's sharpshooter and quickly taps out. Natalia wins the match. We then go on to the main show and the show opens up with a Hell in a Cell match for the SmackDown Women's Championship as champion Bianca Belair takes on Bayley. A Bayley puts on a showcase of underhanded tactics targeting Belair's arm and shoulder, tying the this ESTs a hair to a chair for me and personally. tormenting her and even biting her. However, Belair shows her toughness and dishes out a lot of punishment to Bayley with a role model injuring her knee. It's a seesaw battle as both women batter each other with kendo sticks and chairs. Both women are beat up, but Bianca shows more heart, hitting a sent on to Bailey while she's laying on a ladder, followed by a KOD to the challenger that drives her into the ladder. Bella covers her and it's all over. She retains the SmackDown Women's Which Championship. I'm okay with. Next up, Alexa Bliss cuts a promo while on her swing, telling the fans that Lily is. <sighs> RIP Shayna Baszler, bro. Your main roster career is dead, bro. It's, oh my gosh, bro. Still in timeout. She tells the WWE Universe Baszler brought everything upon herself with her negativity and reminds the fans to expect the unexpected. So much cringe, bro. Just, just, oh my god. Just so much goddamn cringe, man. I'm just be honest with you. That match was awful. So bad. Don't even know why it was on the show. Next up, it's Cesaro versus Seth Rollins. As Seth Rollins ambushes Cesaro while the Swiss Superman is making his way down to the ring. It's a technical classic as both men counter each other's yeah, finishes, a, a with Cesaro avoiding the curb stomp and Rollins countering the neutralizer. The things get personal though when Cesaro rips off Rollins' black glove, stuffing it in his mouth. Cesaro gets Rollins in the Cesaro swing for 15 swings as well as locking in the sharpshooter until Rollins reaches the ropes. Cesaro looks like he's going for the sharpshooter again, but Rollins surprises him with a small package, getting the 1, 2, 3, and Rollins wins the match. I wasn't the biggest fan of that finish. I thought that finish kind of was lackluster for me personally. I get why they did it, because, you know, they're now tied up 1-1 one, one in, you know, their, their feud of matches. So now there's going to be the rubber match. And we're going to see who's going to ultimately win this little feud. I'm hoping Cesaro does. So I get why they did it. I understand. I just wasn't a big fan of the roll-up. But I understand why they did, why they had uh, Rollins win that way. So I get it. But honestly, man, uh, this was the better one of the better matches of the night. So 
Lich. Seth Rollins is beat up, but he's ecstatic to finally have a win over Cesaro. But this one isn't over yet. Yeah, it's not Next over. Next up, it's a match between Baszler and Alexa Bliss. Oh Shayna Baszler is looking to punish Alexa, but Bliss uses her Jedi mind tricks to befuddle and bewilder Baszler while also getting Nia Jax to take out Reginald. Yeah, WTF, what the hell. Bliss basically mesmerizes Baszler and her entourage, making for an easy match. Twisted Bliss on Baszler and Bliss gets the win. We then get Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. As Owens so much injured cringe. from Commander Aziz's attack on him on SmackDown. Well, that's a question fans are asking as Owens goes into the match. KO takes the fight to Zayn, but Zayn stays in it, even after a stunner nearly leads to Sami being counted out. The match ends after both men start trading punches and Zayn this hits was also a Luva kick a, for the a pinfall decent victory. Match as well. we get the Raw Women's Championship match as champion Rhea Ripley Did not like the ending Charlotte of this Flair. Match. A flare attacks Ripley before the bell and the two fight tooth and nail with a number of near falls, including one where the nightmare lands on the riptide on Flair, but the queen has the wherewithal to put her foot on the rope. Another close call comes when Flair locks in the figure four, however Ripley grabs the ropes for the break and the two fall out of the ring, with Ripley grabbing the cover to the announce desk and earning a DQ. Charlotte Flair wins, but only by DQ, which means that Ripley retains the Royal Women's Championship. Ripley attacks Flair after the match, and the two brawl until Ripley hits the Riptide on the Queen. And finally, we get the main event, as it's the last chance Hell in a Cell match for the WWE Wasn't Championship. When a big fan of this ending, Drew McIntyre either. loses, he can never challenge Bobby Lashley again for the WWE Championship. But Drew McIntyre is a man on a mission as he pummels and punishes Lashley from pillar to post. The only problem is that Lashley is equally determined to retain his title. A referee bump spoils Drew's chance of getting of the 1-2-3 on Lashley, but the challenger wisely asks the outside official to enter the ring and the match resumes. Drew's determination sees him escape the hurt lock and hit the Claymore kick on Bobby Lashley going for the pin, but that is until MVP lives up to his name and pulls the referee out of the ring, breaking mm -hmm. the count. Lashley takes his frustrations out on MVP, laying Lashley's manager out. The hard-hitting bout continues with McIntyre finally setting Lashley up for the Claymore, but MVP has recovered and he holds McIntyre's foot, preventing the Warrior from hitting the finisher and allowing Lashley to roll McIntyre up for the 1-2-3. Bobby Lashley retains the WWE Championship. MVP waves goodbye to McIntyre after the match as Drew can no longer challenge Lashley for the WWE Championship as Hell in a Cell closes out. Wasn't a big fan of that ending only because I felt like if you're going to have this speed of stipulation to this match where Drew can never challenge for the title again as long as Bobby's holding it, I would think it would end in some, in like a, a different fashion where I guess you can say maybe, you know, of course MVP gets involved and then maybe, you know, some type of powerful move where. Um, Bobby Lashes is able to go for the pin because I think Hell in a Cell. I've just I'm always envisioning it as a brutal, intense match. So I'm not envisioning it envisioning it as a match that ends in a roll up. It's usually the match ends where someone just is so devastated and the other person is tired and exhausted and and battered and beaten and bloody and had to crawl to get the pin. That's what I envisioned Hell in a Cell. Not a roll-up victory. Like, I don't know, man. I just, I didn't like that for that to be his last chance, supposedly, at going for the title. It's just like, if he's going to go out, I'd rather have been some, you know, cheating tactics. And then, of course, he just gets destroyed by Bobby Lashley. But instead, he just goes for a roll-up. Uh, I was just like, yeah, I just... It just left a sour taste in my mouth, man, after the pay-per-view. I was like, this is how you end it? Like, I, I, I didn't really like the ending. Out. But that was a quick recap. What about the good, the bad, and the downright ugly? As always, we start off with the good as the number one, a momentous match. Now, we can't praise Bailey versus Bianca Belair's match enough as Bailey showed oh, this why was, she's the best woman wrestler was a, today uh, and why Bianca is fast approaching One of the better her. matches Bailey of the night. Bailey has perfected her heel act and it was evident tonight with the role model utilizing every devious tactic in the book and even challenging Abdullah the Butcher by taking a pint out of Belair. Both Belair and Bailey utilized Bianca's braid with Bailey tying Belair's hair to the bottom rope and later a steel chair. But Bianca wasn't afraid to employ her braid, tying Bailey's wrist to it and pummeling her. I just love the different amount of ways that Bianca uses her hair as a weapon. Mm -hmm. But the action was heated and featured the brutality you'd expect in a Hell in a Cell match. 
Number two, a phenomenal finish. As sometimes a match can be exciting up until the last few seconds, only for the finish to flop and take something away from the match. This is, the this is what I was talking about. The match could be decent, and then the finish, you just be like, whoa, what was this? I did like the finish of this match. This was probably one of the most better spots of the entire night. That shit was brutal looking. That was pretty cool. Bianca versus Bailey match as Bella finished things off with an explosive ending, planting Bailey into the ladder via KOD. It was a hard hitting finale that highlighted Belair's quest for revenge on Bailey and a reminder that she's a champion not to be trifled with. Yeah, that was Number pretty three, cool. Number three, forwarding feuds. Now, tonight's show featured plenty of action from start to finish, and just as good, the show forwarded feuds, particularly the war between Cesaro mm -hmm. and Rollins and the seemingly endless struggle between Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. The WWE has shown some serious savvy with both programs by having neither wrestler in them dominate the series. The WWE has a bad record of booking wrestlers into a feud only to have one wrestler win every match. And that wasn't the case tonight as Seth Rollins scored a much needed win over Cesaro after dropping two matches to the Swiss Superman yeah. while Sami Zayn got the Duke on Kevin Owens and giving Zayn plenty of ammunition to claim Owens' back. Oh, I don't know why I said 1-1. One, one. I said it's, it's, it's tied 1-1. One, one. I don't know why I said that. My bad. But no, nah, uh, Seth definitely did need that win. I just wasn't a big fan of how he got it. I would have liked if he got it some other way, but he still needed that win. But I'm glad they are continuing the feud. With him, rather than running lopsided feuds that quickly burn out fans, the WWE is building <clears throat> interest in a rematch for both programs, something that is the goal of any wise booker. Number four, it never gets old. How did they do it? Fans have to wonder how Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens can wrestle what seems to be their millionth match against each other. No, they're really find good way to in the ring together. Fresh and exciting. There's a little question that both wrestlers. It was an enjoyable match, but I think uh, this match took place after the Becky, uh, after not Becky, after the, uh, um, what match was that? Um, I can't even think of it. It's so trash. Uh, Alexa Bliss and Shayna Baszler. It took place after that match, and I was kind of, I was engaging with the chat at this point. Like, we was just kind of just, in, you know, enjoying each other's banter in the chat. You know, it was, I was more focused on that. Even though I was watching this match, and it, it was definitely decent, um, I just wasn't as invested as I should have because I was literally just, like, really just disconnected at this point after seeing what I saw happen on an actual pay-per-view with Alexa Bliss. I was like, what the hell is this, bro? I don't so care for the rest of the best show. workers in WWE, but that's no guarantee they can keep the fans entertained when you think of how many times they battled each other, not only in WWE, but throughout their careers. Somehow, Zayn and Owens know how to find a way to put a fresh spin on their matches, and tonight's bout was no exception. Number five, a clever twist. And just as we praise the finish for Bianca vs. Bailey, we have to call out the WWE for what can only be called a clever finish between Rhea Ripley and Charlotte uh, Flair. Having Ripley finish. get what looked to be an intentional disqualification might have seemed like an anticlimactic ending, yeah. but it furthered the story of Ripley growing as a wrestler and learning from how to make your videos yeah, I, easier to find I'm about to disagree with you on that one, WrestleMania. I, I just did not like that, bro. I'm just like, what the hell? What is this? What is this? Experiences against like, who am I supposed to really root for? Like, I want Rhea to keep the title, but it's like, she, like, that was a heel maneuver type thing. Like, I, it's like, nah, I just, I just wasn't a fan of it. Me the personally. veteran Flair. This was heard during the post-match exchange between Flair and Ripley when Flair said, you're learning, bitch. And Ripley replied, I only did what you would do to me, Queenie. And I a mean, momentous main event. I get that the from that standpoint. I just wasn't a big fan of it. I thought they could have did something else. They could have did potentially something else. I'm not sure what they could have did, but I just thought intentionally getting disqualified is like, well, it's like it comes off like you couldn't beat her, so you got to hit, get yourself disqualified. I just didn't. I didn't like it, but maybe someone else did. Maybe more of you, more of you uh, didn't. Enjoy that ending. The Almighty Era faced its biggest challenge tonight as a determined Drew McIntyre seemingly had Lashley locked in the cell. However, Lashley's manager MVP lived up to his name, helping give Lashley the edge he needed by interfering not once, but twice. Mm -hmm. That's not to say Drew dominated, not hardly as both McIntyre and Lashley seemed to have the upper hand only for the other to recover. This was a fantastic fight that told the eternal story of a heel using underhanded tactics to outdo his babyface opponent. 
The WWE has created some serious storytelling possibilities as Drew deals with the reality he came up short and can no longer challenge Lashley while the champion seems more dominant than ever. That was a good what about the bad is number one a poor pre-show book. Maybe he'll turn heel from that. Maybe that uh, causes him to snap. He does need a character change in my opinion to freshen up his character. So maybe he turns heel from that. King. And regardless of whether you enjoyed tonight's match between Natalia and Mandy Rose, you have to ask what the WWE was doing booking her on a pre-show. If the purpose of the pre-show is to provide an exciting match, this was a little disappointing. Didn't watch if it. If the purpose so was to forward the Mandy know. Rose and Dana Brooke battle for respect angle, it should have been a tag team match, either a non-title match or better, a title match. A singles match between the two tag teams is the epitome of filler and better suited for Raw or SmackDown, not a pay-per-view. Number two, better dead than red. Now, although it looks like there's no turning back, the WWE's use of red for the Hell in a Cell remains an eyesore and is only surpassed in its ghastliness by the red light that the WWE used to employ for the Fiend's matches. Thank God we didn't have that this year. I don't know. I just wish they brought the old cage back. Thank you. That was the good, the bad. What about the downright Alexa ugly? Alexa Bliss. Moronic mind control. Yes. If we had any doubts about just how bad Alexa oh Bliss' is solo act has become, tonight's match between Bliss and Baszler dispelled all doubts. Initially, the idea that Feed's former disciple turned into a monster all on her own had potential, but it stumbled from the start, only worsening when Bliss introduced her doll Lily and jumping the shark when Bliss tormented Shayna Baszler in a segment that had fans and critics instantly ranking it as one of the worst segments in Raw history. How am I talking about a program that had the infamous Katie Vick angle, mm -hmm. Kane lighting Jim Ross on fire, mm -hmm. and more repressed memories we'd rather not dig up? Yeah. The idea of Bliss possessing hypnotic powers over her opponents might seem clever, but like the Fiend's imperviousness to pain, it makes it difficult to book as she can apparently win any match now. You know Facts. the train is flying off the track when one of the WWE superstars has powers like Pokemon's Hypno. Like, jeez. Oh Why? My gosh. Despite the Bliss BS, tonight's Hell in a Cell over delivered with two great Hell in a Cell matches and several good matches in between. If the WWE wanted to motivate its fans for the return of live shows, it couldn't have done a better job. I don't know, advocates? man. The good, the bad, and the downright ugly for the Hell in a Cell pay per view. I don't know. I, I, I'm going to have to disagree with Le or WrestleMania on this one, man. I, yeah, I wasn't really. Uh, Big fan of this pay-per-view. I gave it a 4 out of 10 for me personally after the stream. Well, um, as the show ended, I gave it a 4 out of 10. I did not really too much care for uh, this match. Well, this this in pay-per-view. Um, in the sense of the booking decisions and just some of the stuff that was going on within the show. And how the matches ended. Now, I'm sure there's people that enjoyed it. But for me, I, I have to give it a 4 out of 10. It's not... I, I, I may be able to think of two matches I would probably revisit. Maybe two or three matches. And even then, it's, it's still one of those type of things where it's like, nah, I can't. I can't give this one a good rating, bro. A lo the Alexa Bliss situation alone automatically drops it so many points. Because that should have never been on a show. And maybe you can say I'm being a little critical here, you know, maybe over critical here. But I, I just for me personally, I'm going to tell you this now. If I was watching this by myself to take notes, I would have been bored out my mind. But it wasn't if it wasn't for everyone that was in my chat last night while we was watching it together. It made the show that much more enjoyable. Uh, because of my commentary your guys commentary in the chat it just made it that much better so me personally i give this show a four out of ten so comment down below let me know what do you give hell in a cell 2021 do you what out on a scale of one to ten what are you giving it me i'm giving it a four out of ten i would love to get your thoughts and opinions on it on how you rate the show from last night but i appreciate all the love and support road to 50k appreciate y'all kicking in with me i'll see y'all on the next one peace